Hello, good evening, and welcome to Our Front. My name is Raymond Darkwa. Tonight, my guest is a woman who's been recently described as the messiah of a campaign and the people's representative. And if you believe the Individual Bondholders Association of Ghana, she is perhaps the biggest hope to their quest to survive the domestic debt exchange program. She was, for a very long time, 24 good years at the Supreme Court. And uh, she's now retired. And she was the 13th Chief Justice. I now know what you, you're getting to because she's been very vociferous recently about this domestic debt exchange problem. It's also gotten her into some problem, though, with other people. Justice Sofia Kufuya, welcome to our front. Thank you. I hope you are doing well. I am doing well. Don't I look well? Uh, well, yeah, what you believe? <laughs> you are doing well. But, you know, uh, more recently, I mean, I, yes, bec you, you are retired, right? So yes. Life as a retiree, how is it like? You no longer have to go to the Supreme Court. That's known for sure. Yes. You are very busy with the IEA too. That's yes. also known for sure. But generally, how is life like? It's been full. It's been interesting. It's been restful. I can choose my times more effectively than before. But um, for me, it's been very good. Do you miss time on the bench? No. I've, I've served. Mm. I finished. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be retired. I'm happy I'm not each time uh, saddled with having to write judgments and uh, agonizing over decisions and so on and so forth. So I really don't miss the work. And, and I don't think that most judges, after a long cause on the bench miss the daily grind. I, I doubt it. Oh, really? But you, because you seem to enjoy it. I used to report from the Supreme Court. And I mean, the control, the power, the ability to make the entire place go quiet in a second in your presence, that, that's, that's something that gives you a lot of power. So you surely should be enjoying that. No, it was, uh, it was, it was work which you have to do to your utmost ability. And um, I think that when you have delivered of your best mm. and you, time comes to move on, yeah, time has come to move on. So you move on you, you, you and, uh, and, and begin to, to enjoy where, where you have now been, you have now moved to. It's, it's, it's life, isn't it? So apart from work with the IEA, where you are a senior fellow. What else do you do? Well, I'm still chairing the COVID-19 National Trust Fund. National Trust Fund. Emphasis, not the COVID-19 Fund. They are two legally different activities. The Trust Fund. And I get why you are separating the two because For sure. there's a lot of concern about COVID-19 funds of which, which way it's been used in the case that has been reported consistently. So I get why mm -hmm. you are separating that. And then people would put my face there mm -hmm. and start insulting me. Yeah, because they actually think And they that forget the word trust. Oh, I see. See, trust fund, fund. Mm -hmm. Yes, and two different entities altogether. That clarity... Do you often have to let people know, or you don't need to do that? Oh, I, we have, I think I have now virtually given up trying to. Explain to people. Yes, because we've had press conferences. We mm. ha we've, we've had our staff go on so many media to explain, to distinguish, to, uh, and all that. But uh, it appears that to me, and please don't take offense, it, uh, it appears to me that even the media is not interested in the difference. If it sounds int uh, exciting, if it sounds scandalous, if it sounds aha, an opportunity to throw mud at, uh, at some public figures, yes, let's do it. The COVID-19 National Trust Fund is 
the trustees are myself, the uh, Archbishop Akrufi. Mm. Does he deserve being slurs being cast at him? Um, the Deputy Governor Elsie Awaji, does yeah. she deserve any such thing? No. Uh, Gifty Afeni does he. Same thing, she's a member. Dr. Tanko, heart specialist. Dr. Furisapo, a, 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 a philanthropist businessman. Kofi Bakna. Are we going to be spending charity money? Are we going to be stealing monies? We, the monies we handle are charity funds, not monies that have been donated to, uh, that have been given or loaned or, or, or gifted to the state. These are monies people, you ordinary people, companies, families, groups, during the, the, the height of the pandemic, uh, people who wanted to contribute somehow to the alleviation of the plight of those who might be affected by the pandemic in one way or the other, or to help support whatever was being done in the fight against the pandemic. That's the money we control. And, they, and at its maximum, it was it, you know, inc inclusive of um, the foreign exchange. There was some small amount of foreign exchange from Ghanaian students, one, one group in Holland and another, some people from the US. It was, uh, if you're taking current values, it would be round about 72, 73 million, million, million not billion, Ghana cities, uh, okay? But in real time, it was about 54 when we were, 54 million, when we were really uh, up using it and applying it. And uh, there's still a small balance left of approximately 6 million cities, which we're using to mop up a whole load of other activities which are incomplete. In fairness, I saw some breakdown of what you use the money for on the website. Mm -hmm. For some specifics, I mean, to the groups and the amount denoted to it. So when there was a conversation about people not accounting for the COVID cash, I'm not sure they were directly referring to the trust fund because that detail was there. But you know that that conversation came up, right? That oh, but we, we, were, we are an accountable body, mm -hmm. accountable under the law, and, and, and strictly speaking, accountable to the people who brought the monies, and accountable to the people of Ghana in whose names the monies were being given as the beneficiaries of the money. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Right from the start, uh, and I've already mentioned the names of the people yeah, who you. are the trustees. And uh, every, we were m most concerned to make sure that I I everything else aside, as much of that money went into doing what the fund was set up to do. So we've the, we, we, one of our first policies was that even the administrative costs must not exceed 10%. And on okay. average, the administrative costs have not even reached 10% of what we, we, we received. For clarity, that's not a government role. Um, Your the role on the trust fund, it's not a government role. It's, a, it's government in the sense that it, it, we are set up by statute. Okay. So it's a, it's a public fund, it's mm -hmm. a public charity. A statutory charity, yes, and we were sworn in by the, the by the president, yes. I'm asking this because it's come up. You know, when you joined the picketing, mm -hmm. some had insisted that well, but she's part of government anyway, so she cannot really be absorbed 100 percent from the things she has complained about when it comes to general management of the economy and everything. 
So what has uh, administering charity funds, which have been ring-fenced, mm. completely ring-fenced, from all other uh, springs of government, uh, what has that got to do with um, the national economy? I, I get you. <laughs> I mean, I, I get, the, get that. But that's well, my the question that, then yeah. is to every person who even wants to ask that question. Mm. No, yes. I get you. Now, why then did you join this picketing? You explained previously that, well, I mean, you felt that you needed to identify with the people. At the time that you had joined the picketing and you were live speaking on TV, some were sharing uh, details about what you are currently entitled to. Yeah, insisting so what? that You really are not with the vulnerable and disadvantaged people who were and, there. And so if I... If I feel, um, don't you ever feel empathy? I with, do, I mean, yeah. With, with people or with persons or with causes or with uh, groups who, who have nothing to do with you, who are not, ne you're not necessarily in the same position as they are. Well, I am in part because I do have some, uh, some government bonds mm -hmm. that I used my pension money. To, to purchase. Okay. Yes. But even if I didn't, what's wrong with that? You can't, can't, can't a person take a stand as out of principle, out of principle, that uh, there but for the grace of God go I. And therefore, if by the grace of God I've got, I've got, um, I've got voice, mm. why shouldn't I use it? In fact, I've decided that after, the, after, after, after this, I'm always going to find a cause to espouse. Really? Why shouldn't I? That's why I've, God has given me life beyond um, retirement. Okay. Yes, and I think that every day after retirement, I must use it to, to worship God. But there are many ways of worshiping, isn't there? Yeah. And part of... Loving your neighbor as yourself is, part, is also worship, isn't it? Mm. Uh, well, at least I think so anyway. I, I get your point. Is it fair to ask you, why now? Why not now? Oh, why, why not now? What should have happened before? Maybe nothing had tickled me mm -hmm. until then. A lot of things have tickled me. Okay. And... Um, Maybe it was because last week I saw, I saw on the on the on the news on Joy News, mm -hmm. I saw on 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 Joy News, um, the people who were picketing, okay. and I, and I recognized some of them, and and it really touched my heart because these I knew them to be people who have held all sorts of positions okay. before. And, and it struck me just how deep the, this, um, this um, debt exchange matter, uh, how deep it has cut and has cut the wrong group of people. Yes. And in fact, I was so concerned, I actually even started calling some of my uh, former colleagues on the bench whether... Okay. Uh, they had also gone and put everything in, in, in bonds when they retired. Okay. Because that has happened to a lot of people. Yes. The, your thoughts, your appreciation, and your understanding of what the entire domestic debt exchange is, and why you chose to join them at the time that you did, has also been questioned. The words of Gabi Asharashi. I mean, Gabi Asharashi. And who, what gives him the right to do that? And why should you bother me with what he has to say? Because he's very influential in government. As he, what? As cousin to the president. He has, he has a lot of power. In fact, 
half of the time, whatever you say is going to happen in government really happens, actually. Uh, well, so you say. As me, I, know, I don't know about, I don't know about that. I'm a private citizen of Ghana, mm -hmm. minding my own business and choosing how to mind my own business. That's it. You know, uh, there's one, and that is why I've decided that, uh, yeah, I've, res I've rested enough since retiring and uh, the strength I have, I'm going to use it positively as much as I can. It's that we like to package people into, into silos. This one is this and should be doing this. This one is that and ought to be like this. This one is related to this person. So this must be how the person should be thinking. Nobody tells me what to think except God. And nobody can tell me what to do with my time, and what to say about anything going on in this country. Thank God we have a constitution. Flawed though it might be, at least the right to say what I want to say, and the right to the, the freedom of conscience, that's mine. And nobody will, will, will trample on it, however influential they are, wherever they are influential. I find it rather insulting. And uh, all I can say is that um, people like that, I refuse to engage with them about anything. Because I know where I'm coming from, and I know what I want to do. Um, those who ride uh, piggyback on other people, they do they can do whatever they want to do. So please, in this discussion, let's talk more about things that have to do with the better interest and the greater interest and, and, and benefit of the people of the Republic of Ghana, rather than some, I don't, I don't want to use the word that's coming to my mind. You've been questioned on that. The By whom? But the presumption being that you do not appreciate that you can, on your own, exempt yourself uh, and that there are guarantees given you in that capacity. Oh, you see, that is exactly what I wanted people to understand. There's, even this concept of self-exemption, I don't mm -hmm. even, well, I'm not really into finance and that level of financing. Okay. I will be the last to say I know anything about it. But I know when I've contracted. Right? Okay. And okay. when you purchase a government bond, it is, it is exactly that. It's a contract binding the government, the binding, not government, binding the state in cert along certain terms. So if you want to uh, tinker or if you want me to now come and agree with you new terms of our transaction. You don't try to shove it down my throat with threats, with veiled threats, with cajolement, with half-truths, and things like that. Secondly, before you, you come and tell me uh, if you don't soften up on the if, if we don't adjust the terms of of the of our transaction uh if you don't come in if you don't come and do it uh, we the, the nation is going to collapse you you need to tell me a bit more than that and i still say that i need to know a lot more and so i did not i for example did not sign up on the debt exchange not that at all. No, why should I? I didn't. Because it had not been properly explained to me. It had not, no assurances had been given to me. You see, it rather made me begin to get a bit suspicious that um, regardless of the terms of the, of the transaction, the government will try in one way or the other, which of course they will fail, but will try to renege on, on the terms 
of our transaction if I do not okay. bow down to the new, the novation they want to, to, to create. Yes. I will engage on the question about the explanation on where we are as an economy and whether or not we can survive without a domestic debt exchange. But you were asking for information on this. Could it not have been more appropriate if you, mindful of your status, met the finance minister or insisted on a meeting with him for the answers that you needed? I am not my status. I'm Sophia Abina Boafua Akufu, the daughter of Reverend and Mrs. Akufu. Okay? But not just that. Yeah, that yeah. is who I am. Yeah. That is who I am. And if you want me to come to some kind of, you know, you know, this whole thing, I don't even understand. So I'm the former Chief Justice. Therefore, I am the, you can a, have a the former. audience and the ear of the finance minister if the explanation that you want if, it should be if given. If those people sitting outside there, on, at outside Ministry of Finance, they don't have access to his ears. Really? Is it right? I, am, I don't believe in spurious um, privileges and, and things like that. I guess the question I'm trying to ask is, did you try to get this information from the right source, that's being the finance ministry, and the minister himself, for example? As to what? As to the explanation you require on the scope of this particular detection program, and the other question you were asking about where we are, where we are today. Aren't I just an ordinary Ghanaian? What the information anybody thinks I'm entitled to? I believe Bob No Rank Ghanaian is also entitled to that information without even having to ask. Openness, transparency, accountability. These are enshrined in our constitution, surely. No, I, I get your point. Because, I mean, I, I was asking this because many have been asking, what triggered this engagement? What triggered her? Has she fallen out with government? No. Who has offended her? Nobody. I'm not a vindictive person. Nobody has offended me. No, absolutely nobody. Nobody. And, but, um, you know, I have to tell you something. The, the reaction, both pros, pro and yeah. con reactions, have really surprised me. And I realized that 73 years, and I don't even know my people. It, because what is there to get angry with me about? And what is there to say, oh, well done. Everybody should be talking about what is going on. You even said that you've been on guard, which presupposes that your previous position was to keep quiet. No, I was uh, ungagged un in the sense that when I was in service, oh, in okay. government mm -hmm. service, as a judge, you don't go shooting your mouth off about anything okay. because you don't know what is going to be uh, uh, in, on, on, on in the docket before you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, and and I, when you're a when you're a Supreme Court judge, I, I, a judge in the final court. You should not uh, shoot your mouth off and be unguarded so that uh, you have to recuse yourself from okay, every case, other case. I get you, yes. Yes, you become a waste. Yes. So you keep to your little corner. You, 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 you don't let yourself be heard too much on, on national and topical issues that have a potential of landing in, in before a court. Allow me to explore this issue about the reaction. I mean, I, I'm sure many people have called you. Some congratulating and some also saying that, are you not afraid? Are you not worried? Should you be out there speaking? Afraid of what? As in like the consequence of having to speak out like you did. Okay, but afraid that somebody will do what? Take a pot shot at me? Uh, like people would insult what? you, people would actually Ins say You know, bad insult about you. is the weapon of the small mind. And uh, people are always casting insults all over the place. So uh, well, um, when we were little, we were taught sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. 
Okay. So if you're going to insult me, insult me. If it if, if it has to do with the shape of my head, did I make my head? If it's got to do w w insulting me about what? Mm -hmm. um, that I don't understand what's going on. Okay, so I'm 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 going gaga in my old age. Okay, so I'm I'm still entitled to my gaga uh, uh, reactions, you know. So you insult me. Does that make me what you're insulting me that I am? No, it doesn't. Does not. Does it diminish me? Not in the s in the not in the sight and in the and in the mind of of right thinking people. So um, I'm grateful for the support okay. that I have I have received. It has really surprised me because um, I di I was I went there simply to do something that I is frankly and honestly and before God I found the right thing to do. Yes. I was I was just going to go and sit with them and hold mm -hmm. the placard. In fact I, I made enquiries. Do I bring do I make my own placard and oh, bring it? Uh, uh, do I, what do I do? Where are you? So on and so forth. And then uh, so I, the, so the person said, well, maybe you should also, you should bring a chair. You don't have to bring the placard, but you should bring a chair because there may not be enough chairs. So I went with my chair. Was <laughs> it your first one? Yeah. First picketing or protest in, in oh, such a form? Was when it the first I was one? a student, I mean, I mean you, we've been there, done that, you know, at tampon days, okay. this and that. And we, when you're young, you do it. I didn't expect that I, in my... Certainly, I haven't done any such thing since I was in my mid-twenties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I felt compelled to do so, and I have done so. And I'm happy I did so, and uh, I will support every worthy cause that uh, it comes henceforth. Have you lost friends through this protest, picketing? Have you lost friends? <laughs> I don't think so. You see, when it, my, in my life as a judge, oh, most of my friends are friends from way back. Yeah. Because you're limiting the opportunity even to make new friends. Okay, yeah. So as to, uh, like I said, you need to ring fence yourself so you can do cases. You can sit on cases. So I, I don't think, no, I don't think so. Rather... I've been getting messages from, from people who are not even in my contact book, okay. you know, numbers, mm -hmm. and they're saying all kinds of things. Are they applauding you? Yeah. Most, yeah. Nobody, has, nobody has actually phoned me or sent me a message to insult me. Not no. at all? No. Nobody has But you're told that. what happens on social media and the other alternatives, right? Um, you know... Long time ago, I taught myself uh, not to see what I don't want to see. So, for example, I said I watched, I saw something on your, mm -hmm. on, on, Joy on, news. on, your, on Joy News. Yes, I watch Joy News. That's about the only channel that I watch. And then I will watch some of the foreign uh, news programs. But for most of the day, I'm not watching any news and I'm not... Uh, social media, I go, I go on Facebook to share devotions. On WhatsApp, I've got my WhatsApp friends and people. Oh, you handle WhatsApp your own people. social media? Yeah. Why should I? Why should somebody? Who am I to have somebody? In, in all fairness, my, a former my chief justice certainly might have uh, a very proper team dealing with the social media. Team? What for? I mean, it, it might sound more complex. Uh, a retired. <laughs> uh, you know, a, a former chief it justice is, so. is just a retired judge. Do retired judges have staff <laughs> checking? Well, out I, on no, their I, I get you, but I, I, was, I was thinking that. Well, no, mm. uh, I I don't have any staff. Okay. As as retired chief justice, I don't have any staff. I I work with the staff here, mm. and I work with the staff at the COVID nineteen National Trust Fund. Mm. I also chair the University of Ghana, but we on, yeah. uh, they only do uh, university-related things, okay. not necessarily for me, but with me. And that's it. What, what do I want to set up an office for? I'm tired. 24 years writing judgments. You think it's easy? 
Now, this question about how we treat the elderly, you consistently made reference to it. They say a nation that doesn't really honor its elderly is not worth dying for. Is it peculiar to the current financial difficulties we find ourselves in, or Ghana in and of itself had difficulties with uh, how the elderly is taken care of? I think that as time passes, it's been more and more difficult for elderly people, and especially elderly people with no means or with very limited means. Mm. And uh, you just have to go to any of the government hospitals and just sit in the uh, recep recep reception, the OPD reception, and, and you will see how difficult it is for, uh, for, for, for the elderly people. Yes. And, and uh, there is, we don't really, we don't really have a, a social support, okay. a, a state-sponsored social support system for them. NGOs will mm. run various things, but um, no, there isn't. So that is why every pensioner wants to make sure that they don't become one of the, uh, the, 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 the pathetic sites, you know, and that they should be able to afford their medication because the medication for the elderly, although it's supposed to be partially covered uh, by the uh, insurance, uh, um, the national health insurance, that's another story altogether, isn't it? So yeah, that that you're supposed to be part of the indigenous selection group at a certain age mm -hmm. when you retire. When yes. Yes, but uh, it's not like that. And uh, the elderly who don't have their own vehicles, even if they are getting on the Ayalolo bus, mm -hmm. is it free for them? Is it That's discounted? That's what they said it should be. Uh, and as far as I know, it is not. Mm. You know, and um, and and in any case. Um, Imagine that you've, you've retired and you've, you want to come to town and you're waiting for the Ayalolo bus and all those young people are, yeah, that's, uh, are, are hustling you and all that. The, the question that when you were talking about the things that you have done and the, your role in the judiciary and all of that, does it surprise you when people connect you to the president because of your name? As though I have no uh, merit or, or no capacity. Yes, that irritates me. But I don't, it, it, I don't let it, I don't let it bother me. They don't know that you are appointed to the Supreme Court some 24 years and you spent 24 years there. They didn't know that you were even appointed by former President Rawlings to the Supreme Court. Yeah. That never comes up. No, it, it never comes up. And, and, um, and and so I and and actually I made sure I made sure if you uh, well of course people have such short memories but I made sure that in my in the speech I was asked to give when I was uh, sworn in mm -hmm. by 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 the president as chief justice I I commented on the the the, the peculiar fact that it was um, it was. President Rawlings. President Rawlings, who appointed me to the Supreme Court straight from uh, private practice. Brought something out of you that you said you didn't know existed, right. actually. I read that speech. Yeah. Right. And then uh, it was Kufour. President Kufour who nominated me to the African Court. The African court. And uh, for most of the time when I was in the African Court, it was President Mills or President... Um, Mahama, who would be attending the mm -hmm. African Union meetings. And, and every time they want to know, as soon as they arrive, or sometimes before they arrive, the ambassador would want to know what special needs okay. the African court has. Mm -hmm. And so they, and they, would, they would help us with the, the political powers. And yet you are part of a friends and family government. 
Well, that why? Perception. I, 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 well, that's 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 perception, and um, I I have I, I know what I'm worth in terms of the work that I I do and have done, and I know that every assignment ever given to me, uh, certainly in the public sphere, I have I have um, acquitted myself very well. I'm, I'm getting that, but this clarity and all of that for a very long time and well, p p perhaps, so if today somebody asks you for your political ideology, can you state one? My political ideology? No, you are You are not under any compulsion to uh, well, behave uh, in a neutral way or a, an objective manner. I, I, you know, the, the, I think from, from even the... The, the profile of yeah. the people who appointed me. Yes. You can see that I have not been anybody's friend or anybody's enemy. That's why I <laughs> need to know your political ideology. It My political a lot ideology, ideo do we still talk ology, ology? <laughs> <laughs> but you have not answered since, the question. Since communists, <laughs> okay, yeah. do we mm. talk? <laughs> No, uh, my m if I have an ideology, it's a it's a egalitarianism. Okay. You know, for people to to uh, everyone to have their uh, space to, to uh, recognized and accepted for them for their voice for them to have a voice, and if they are voice if they don't have voice to have some recourse to somebody to speak for them, and uh, for me the most important thing is that at the end of the day, everything will work out perfectly and wonderfully. And as we had, we had all hoped it would be in, in, 19, in 1957, when I was standing at the airport junction with my dad and my sisters, waving my little uh, flag oh, at, at the Duchess of Kent oh, I see. as she was coming in. Yeah, you know, and uh, for the Republic of Ghana to be to, to, to be what we would all want it to be. What I would like to see is that every Ghanaian is giving 100% of their very best, okay. not for their pocket, but for the common good. That at the end of the day, this is what we have achieved for, for, this, for this country. And, and, and that's it. So then, uh, then when you want me to sacrifice, okay. you're sacrificing and I'm sacrificing. But if you, you tighten your belt, tighten your belt, and um, we are tightening our belts and sacrificing, but we don't see any evidence of sacrifice on the other side. It's not a transaction, an equal transaction. Do you disapprove of how the economy is being managed? Um... Economic management, that one, you're taking me to some broader realm. I mean, where I'm, just, I'm just asking I have you no what expertise. you think about how the economy is being managed. Like what? As in, we are currently at our 17th IMF program, going to 18th and all of that. Mm -hmm. The conversation in this country is about why do we always, almost every five years, go into the same program? Mm -hmm. Why is our economy in this current very terrible state? Okay. Do you have worries about that equality? Uh, I, I'll be very honest with you. I had not been tracking how many times we've been to IMF. And uh, in, in doing some readings these days, I realized that certain points in time when I was a student and uh, when I was fresh out of law school, those were all yeah. IMF yeah. periods. Uh -huh. I wasn't aware. You, you were just slogging along. And, and surviving, yes. But um, it, it, when it comes to that, yes, I think that practically every government we've had has not served us well in terms of economic management because it's not been, you know, it's been, uh, uh, we, you, you think you've come up yeah. and then out of the blue suddenly, you're going down in sometimes the downward spiral is quite a steep slide and and then you come out of it and you go back to it and you keep asking yourself are we simply repeating the same thing over and over again or are we experimenting uh, without 
um, properly scoping where we even want to go. Okay. Uh, yes, because uh, where do we want to go? Because once you know where you want to go, then you're supposed to. Well, when I learned uh, uh, planning, you scope where you want to go, and then you begin to break it down into steps. Isn't that it? And I each step has to be measurable, and it has to be realistic, and it has to be, y you keep evaluating as you go along. But if you, go, if you decide I'm going to Kanishi, and you just suddenly go tearing off, you, 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 you don't have water, you, you're not sure about your energy, you know, you're just going. Are you going to get there in a fit state? Because when you get there, you should be able to enjoy being where you want to go okay. to, and when you get there, you should know where you want to go to beyond there. You've described the current um, inclusion and the arrangement, the domestic debt exchange program, with very strong words. Y mm -hmm. You have been quite categorical in your mind that it's not the best way to go. You have also been quite strong with your words against how the entire project has been carried out. Do you, in all of this, have a fundamental problem with how Kendo Ferrata is running this economy? How, all I, listen, all I recall, all I recall is that when Ken became Minister of Finance in 2017, I heard him on the TV, he was being in, he was talking and he was saying that he sees his responsibility as being that of uh, protecting the national coffers. Now, promise, the promise and the achievement, the gap is too big and I need more explanation. I think that's it. You know, uh, I, I, you'll be surprised. I, I normally I take things when it comes to th a lot of things. I take things from their uh, the, the most simplified yeah. format. There's no need to to be complex about all kinds of things. I'm not an economist, so I'm not going to be able to argue all kinds of isms and so on and so forth. No, but all I know is that you were going to protect the national coffers, and, and they are now empty. Whether they were empty at that time or not, it's neither here nor there. Because you were not going to be uh, protecting the empty thing. You were going to protect it and make sure that everything that comes into, into it henceforth is going to be well husbanded. I'm using that word uh, in its old-fashioned <laughs> term, mm. you know, and, 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 and so we would go on and we will not, you know, sort of reverse again. Yes. So I've been, it, it, it's been very disappointing. Mm -hmm. How the economy has turned out. Yes. And w the fact is, whether... Whether it, it is Keno Furiata or if it was Mr. Uh, it was Sektepe before Mr. Furiata, yes. Uh, if, if it was somebody else, it would still have been the same. I would still feel the same. Mm. It's not, you know, in public things, in things concerned with the Republic of Ghana, in things that are matters for the, of, of not matters of public interest, I don't get personal. It's not personal. Okay. It's not it's not Ken of Uriata, the person who's been given the responsibility to manage the economy, I don't think, has done a good job. Okay. That's it. Should he be removed? Hey, as for that one, I'm not his appointer. <laughs> <laughs> the person who appoints... If we're asked is the to advise the president today, should uh, he remove him? I will ask him, why is he asking me? <laughs> okay, that's an interesting point. Another interesting point I ask you, should there be a reshuffle? There's a massive clamor for some ministers to be reshuffled and all of that. Should there be a reshuffle? I think so. I think so. I think uh, 
there are many areas where there has not been much to show for. Mm. And therefore, somebody else should be asked to try it. And then there are some ministries that also need to go back to their former partners because there are some ministries which were split up. I was explaining to my daughter that when I, when I was growing up, there was Ministry of Transport and Communication. That was just what came into okay. my mind. And transport included air, land, sea, you name it. Anything that is transportational, that was transport and communication. I think they were, at that time, even in charge of, of roads for a bit before they split off roads and highways and so on and so forth. And, but now, we've taken everything apart. And uh, minister of this, minister of that, minister of that, uh, deputy minister of this, deputy <laughs> minister of that. And, uh, and I think we've come to the point where it's quite evident that indeed too many cooks do spoil the broth because each one thinks the other one is doing what they should be doing or everybody is, is getting into the other person's way and turf wars and so on and so forth. What would be an ideal number? Oh, I'm not going to even venture to uh, suggest a number. I'm wrapping up this conversation with an area that you are so familiar with. You mentioned the constitution is flawed. There are some that believe that the entire constitution ought to be overhauled because it's not up to the fit for purpose. There are some that are saying that amendments are required. From your experience, what would be the best way to deliver the goals of development in this country? Identify the areas of the, 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 the portions of the uh, constitution that over the years we've been practicing it, we've been applying it, have, been, have not been pro-development, so to speak, you know. And uh, there's too much concentration of, of power. And the, 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 uh, there is too much said about rights and very little said about responsibilities. And um, although we have uh, in the directive principles of state policy, really amazing principles, okay. which I wish would be even taught specifically in school, because that's, that's really where the, the civic responsibilities are, are spelt out. That part is not, it's not uh, justiciable, they are for guidance. Mm. And um, and so the accountability and uh, and, uh, and and transparency that's where it is, right? Whereas really, uh, um, and I suppose that's where it should be in the best of all possible worlds, so that it's a cross-cutting issue okay. in everything, so that every public position anybody is holding, they are accountable. They ma there must be transparency. And if there isn't, then what? Uh, sometimes it is the then what that is also possibly missing. But for me, I've been, I've, uh, we've, we've got a project that's going on okay. right now, a study going on right now, I think this afternoon um, at 2. Uh, Mr. Uh, Okuje 2 will be also uh, chipping in on his views of the Constitution. Yes, it needs to be, to be um, amended. And really what we should have been doing is that um, uh, over the years, it should have been, we should have been looking at it and reviewing it. That's why, that's why we had a, a, a law re a review commission, a law review com you know, and the law review commission could have even been uh, making recommendations regarding the constitutional reforms. But in the end, we set up a full-scale constitutional review, review commission, but nothing, though they produced uh, worthy documentation, it, somehow the implementation c 
came to a, a, a halt. But, but for a constitution, which if you know the history of the constitution okay. and how it was even set up, the people, the constituent assembly mm -hmm. and all that, I think it's, it has served us very well, particularly in terms of the protection of individual human rights. It's been really, really fantastic. And a lot of countries, not only in Africa, but in other parts of the world, have taken some bits of it and incorporated it in theirs. But we also need to take a look at ours and tinker with it quite substantially to make sure that the, 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 the ethos with which the Constitution was originally set up to enhance freedom, to enhance justice, uh, to enhance accountability and, and transparency and respect for each other and love for country and so on and so forth, that those things will, will, will are, are being uh, properly looked at. Yes. As your generation kill the younger generation? Oh, big time. We what have. Is? Well, look at where we are. What can I say? What can I say? I think, I think we have. I think we have. Uh, especially those, you know, the, the, the post-independence people when we grew up with so much hope in our hearts, but that hope, we couldn't sustain it in the hearts of, of, our, of the next people. Mm. So we have. Can we turn the corner? The corner and go home. As in turn around the fortunes of this country. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, we are, we, 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 we are, Ghana is forever. Ghana is forever. So uh, we will have to turn it around. It's, it's not a question of can we, we must turn it around. Don't ask me how. Oh, okay, I'm not going to yeah, ask that okay, question. Good. I think maybe another <laughs> time we can have that <laughs> detailed conversation. Yes. There's a question if I don't ask you, many will beat me. Are you disappointed in the MPP government? I'm disappointed. To, uh, you want me to be really frank? Yeah. I've been disappointed with every single government we've had under this constitution. Because after all that we went through with the military and everything, and with the, uh, this, this, we centered the constitution as the guiding principle, at least constitutionalism should have been what should have been guiding us but it's we have eroded so many uh, standards we've eroded so many so many principles yes it's not only the the mpp government as far as i'm concerned every government has failed us i'm grateful to you today you're welcome well folks that's why in today's edition of our front